Now we're going to look at identifying the workspace in CorelDRAW and how to clear out that workspace in case something has gone wrong and then saving that workspace for preferences. So let's take a look at that. Your CorelDRAW workspace is divided and identified. I actually downloaded or copied this graphic from the help menu within CorelDRAW. But I'll go through and point out some of these important areas of the toolbar and workspace. Number one, as we look over here, we have the pick tool, which is the most commonly used tool that allows you to select and position objects across your page. The toolbar or toolkit is found from the pick tool all the way down to the paint cans down here in the smart fill tool. So all of this is what we would refer to as the toolbar or toolkit. At the top, we see that we're using CorelDRAW X7 and our CDR graphic that we have saved, this is called the title bar. So the title bar is along the top up here. Then we have File, Edit, View, Layout, Object. All of these pull down menus we would call the menu bar. And those are all diagrammed right here inside this graphic. So that, that is the File, Edit, View, Pull Down menu bar. Underneath the menu bar, we have what's called the standard, what we call the standard toolbar. The standard toolbar has many icons that perform the standard functions, housekeeping things like new, how to start a new document, how to open an existing document, how to save a document, how to print a document, um, how to cut and copy and paste from the clipboard, how to undo and redo. We also have import and export, how to output to a PDF, how to zoom to certain levels within the artwork, how to snap to, and then how to also open other CorelDRAW applications. So that all is called the standard toolbar. Underneath our standard toolbar we have the property bar. Now the property bar is used to show the properties of the icons or objects that you have selected. Therefore, if we click out in this white space, we have nothing selected. So this is showing all of the attributes for the current page. The page is 8.5 by 11. It is in landscape mode. We can have multiple size pages, change our uh, standard of units. And here is called our nudge distance. Uh, the nudge is a very powerful tool that allows you to work with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So, for example, if we have, uh, let's just draw a circle over here with the uh, ellipse tool. If I wanted to nudge that circle, and by the way I'm going to push the space bar in case I don't touch on this earlier, the space bar toggles between the pick tool and the tool you are currently using. So the pick tool being over here and the ellipse tool here. So if I continue to push the space bar that toggles between those two saves you minutes if not hours a week and having to go up there and click on that pick tool. Highly recommend you use both hands on the keyboard and apply that spacebar whenever you can. But the nudge offset is used as you have an object selected you can now I'm going to tap the right arrow key on the keyboard and we see that that's moving that distance in that direction up, down, left, side to side. So what we're going to do is change our nudge offset so if nothing is selected then we're going to be able to change um, our nudge offset and that nudge offset is going to show us right here the distance it's going to nudge so let's make that uh, maybe one inch instead of point one so as we click on the ellipse tool we're able to nudge that one inch at a time so very helpful to be able to figure out and use your nudge now the confusing thing that I've learned is that it only shows the nudge when guess what nothing is selected when nothing is selected um, therefore you want to make sure that you're now my screen isn't refreshing as it should, um, probably a display memory issue. But as you change the nudge, and that changes the distance you can move those. Over here we also have what's called the duplicate distance. This uh, tool allows you to copy an object and place that copy in a certain distance away from the original. Therefore, if I have my object selected here, I have my duplicate set to zero. So if I were to duplicate that by going to either edit and duplicate, and you'll see control D here. If I were to push control D on the keyboard or click on duplicate, that'll put a copy 
right on top of my original circle. If I wanted that copy to move maybe one inch to the right, then I might need to um, get my screen to refresh here. I might need to adjust the x-axis, let's say, to two inches to the right and keep it in line with the y-axis. So we'll select this. This time we'll push Control D on the keyboard and that made our duplicate two inches away. So all of that is found in the property bar depending on which tool you have selected. So therefore if we click on the zoom tool we get all of the different icons for zooming. We can zoom in and out. We can zoom to all of the objects on the page. We can zoom uh, to the whole page, the page width and the height and so forth. By pushing the space bar we can toggle between that tool and the pick tool. So again we're spending a lot of time here just going through the workspace making sure you have a fundamental uh, representation about where these tools are and where some of these toolbars are. Alright, so let's move over. We've got the title bar at the top, the menu bar, the standard toolbar, the property bar. New to uh, X6 or X7, I believe, uh, is this document bar. I think new to X7, actually. Um, X7 gave us this document bar, and that is very powerful, very helpful to allow us to create a new document, and they're all lined right along this bar right here. In old versions, if we wanted to move from one document to the next, we would have to go up here to Window and choose our document. Very helpful that they've given us this document bar. All right. So the document bar, over on the right side of our screen, we see a couple of things. This one right here, this is the object manager opened up as a docker. A docker is a tab sidebar with many tools and options and features you can apply to different objects. So I have this object manager just tabbed uh, or open as a docker over here. If I click this button, it will tab that. And if I click on it again, uh, it'll open it up. If I wanted to close it, I would click on this button here. But if we go to Window and Dockers, it gives us a large list of all the different kinds of dockers you can have open. For example, we could click on the transformations and position docker. So this gives us at our fingertips in this sidebar the ability to change things that are out on our workspace. And we can collapse that and keep that open for later use. More along the workspace we have a color palette. Now I have showing what is the RGB color palette. Now the RGB color palette is important to use for laser engravers. Most, not all, would um, only use the RGB, but most that would use RGB, we can apply different colors to a certain object uh, on the uh, workspace area. And to that object, we can apply different speeds and powers of the laser machine. So for example, if we had some rectangles up here, and if I wanted to engrave three different rectangles with three different speeds and power levels. Those of you with fiber lasers, you can actually use this to your advantage to get different kinds of marks. If I were to make this one um, red and make this one blue and then this one green, that allows us to apply a different level of speed and power from the laser machine to each of these objects. So that's using the color uh, management uh, actually color mapping and then using the color palette with the RGB color palette specifically. So furthermore covering more workspace at the bottom this is called the status bar. Now the status bar is very important because it shows us the status of the object that we have selected. If we were to type in some text here then we would see that this object that we have selected it's listed in the status bar as having artistic text. It gives us the font name on layer one. It is filled black with no outline. If I were to fill this with a color red, I would see the status bar change. And if I apply maybe a, a blue outline to that, then I see a blue outline show up here. If we were to make this larger, move that over here, then we can really zoom up and see that it is the left mouse button that applies the fill. So I want to really get a better use, uh, uh, more explanation of this color palette. The left mouse button, so consider this one right here being your left mouse button, the paint bucket, and this being the right mouse button on your mouse. So when I left click 
on my color it fills the object if I right click on a color it provides the outline of the object very important in using that for the laser engraving machine but that is all using the status bar now right above the status bar we have spot colors now the spot colors aren't used much in laser engraving world now you could use it for some applications if you're working with color or graphics uh, maybe for screen printing UV LED printing and so forth but the spot color it just basically gives you a list of all the colors that are being used in the particular document right above the spot color bar we have what is known as the page navigation I've actually created this webinar or a tutorial in CorelDRAW and I've done that by using multiple pages and we can page from um, from page to page uh, within our uh, workspace so I've got a good definition a couple of pages of each of the primary tools that are used or the icons or bars in CorelDRAW by def definition here and again you could go back to this page and look at the pictures and zoom in and out on those um, but it's very important to have a good working knowledge so that we can, uh, we can uh, identify help that you need if you're calling in for help. This is probably the default screen we're going to work from, more or less. Okay, now we're getting into the uh, one of the calls that we get a lot of times during the month or during the week. We'll, uh, maybe somebody was using somebody else's computer or maybe there's been a Windows update and that messed up somebody's screen many different uh, catastrophes that happen to CorelDRAW but what we want to point out is that there is a tool or a keystroke that you can use to bring your workspace back to factory settings so I'm going to demonstrate that by um, I'm going to minimize this version of CorelDRAW and I'm going to hold down the F8 key so what we're explaining is if you have notice something on your toolbar is missing or is wrong if you've got a missing icon somewhere the first thing to do would be to close down CorelDRAW now I'm not going to close it here but if I were to hold down the F8 key the function 8 key on my keyboard then that's going to try and open CorelDRAW and right here because I was holding down F8 key on my keyboard it's going to ask me are you sure you want to overwrite the current workspace with the factory settings or defaults Normally I would say yes, but I'm going to say no, and I'll skip that step. But you would say yes if you realize something was really wrong. And this will clear up a lot of the uh, toolbar missings or icons or things that maybe your workspace is just acting a little bit goofy and you're trying to get back to factory settings. So I'm going to tell it no, and this will open a brand new session of CurlDraw, but it will open it with my saved preferences. And that would be the thing to do. After you have cleared your workspace with the factory settings, then it probably can save you a lot of time and important to go in and then capture or save the workspace as you want it to appear. So I already have CorelDRAW open here, and I have things set up the way I normally like to use CorelDRAW. For example, my default um, page size, if I were to create a new page, clicking file and new or I could click on the new page icon here or I could push control in all of those doing the same thing I'm gonna type test page here and I'll leave this uh, let's see, 6 by 6 is fine you always want to use RGB as the primary color mode on a laser machine and 300 resolution so starting a new document we would always represent this page as being the size of the part we want to engrave But this relates to um, how we're saving preferences to the workspace. Also, by the way, those that are using a Smart Designer or macros or icons that you have created and saved up here in your extra toolbars, the F8 key has the potential, has the potential to remove those, and you might have to reinstall those. So beware that you might have to reinstall icons up here if you load CorelDRAW's workspace using the F8 key. But once you have cleared the workspace and you started CurlDraw from scratch, then you're going to want to spend some time saving the workspace as you want to appear. For example, I would create a workspace that is about 7 inches by 5 inches. 
as a typical page. Then I'm going to show you here how to save these capture these workspace uh, tips um, in this particular page. So I would then say that my text tool, I like to work more of the Arial font. Now, what happened here, the reason we got this message is because that we are making a change to the workspace without a tool being selected. So what it's telling us is, you are about to change the default object properties of that object without a tool being selected on object. Are you sure you want to do this? And I would indicate yes for artistic and paragraph, which we'll cover in a moment. For artistic and paragraph. So we would say yes, change that please to Arial. I would also change my default font to 36 points. 36 points, and as we select that, we would also select artistic text. So CurlDraw is just warning us, it's going to make these things that we're changing as defaults without any object selected as the default for the new page, or for this page only at this time. We'd also want to be sure that our text is labeled in center so that every time you open CurlDraw, you don't have to make it aerial, you don't have to make it 36 point, and you don't have to center align it. These can save a lot of time in everyday use of CurlDraw. Okay, last but not least, what we'll do is we're going to double click on the pen tool. Now before I do that, I'll show you, when I create a polygon, a rectangle, a square, a circle, an ellipse, we always want, at least always or most of the time, for the laser engraving machine to use our outline polygons as cutting. Therefore, to our specific laser machine, that would be a hairline. That would be a hairline. Anything labeled a hairline to our laser system will be treated as a cut line. It doesn't matter what color it is at all. But we like to set our curl draw so that when we create a polygon, a ellipse, or a rectangle, that those open or are created as default, as a hairline, ready to be cut, and we identify those as red. Again, you don't have to identify those as red, uh, but it's just easier to see those as cut lines for us. All right, so I'll push the space bar. I'm also going to show you how to double click on the pick tool, and that selects everything. A quick way to grab everything is to double click the pick tool. Then we're going to push the delete key. So we have set our text to Arial, 36 point, and center alignment. We've applied a hairline outline uh, to our objects. Now the way that we set that for permanent use is we would double click on the pick tool, or I'm sorry, on the outline tool. We would only want graphic to be checked here, only graphic. We're going to choose OK. We're going to select the width to be a hairline. We're going to choose inches although it may not be necessary, but leaving it inches will help. And then I'm going to use my red color. Again, it doesn't matter what color. If you want a different color, that's fine. But anything that we want to choose to outline, we usually vector with the laser, so we're going to identify that as red, just for ease of use. So when we say OK, it's at this stage that we really, um, I see that my duplicate distance is uh, a quarter. I'm going to change that back to zero and zero. It's at this time that we want to save all of those preferences that we just changed to our workspace. To do this, we're going to click on Tools, click on Options. We're going to select the word Document. When we click on the word Document, it shows over here an explanation. The document options that you changed are applied to this active document. These options can be saved for any new documents you want to create or want to save. So I would recommend that you click Save Options as defaults for new documents and just click all of these different features so you're not going to miss one. So with everything checked and you choose OK, it will now make that the default when you open CorelDRAW. Therefore, when you start typing text, it'll come up, the, come up with the right text that you want, the right size that you want it, the right alignment. If you were to create and draw a polygon, a square, an outline, it will already make it a hairline ready to cut in your laser and identify that as red for ease of use. So that would be the way that you would uh, that we have identified the workspace. Um, so we spent some time showing you how to use the F8 key to get back to factory settings in CorelDRAW and then we've also showed you the steps on how to save the default preferences 
uh, for your workspace.